Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel Educator's Pride. Myself Dr. Savita Khatri. In my videos, I will teach about life sciences topics. In this video, I will discuss about vesicular transport. About active and passive transport, I have already discussed in my previous videos. You will find the link of my previous videos in the end of this video. So let's start with vesicular transport. What is vesicular transport? Basically, it is a type of transport by vesicular formation. It involves the transport of macromolecules across the plasma membrane. It is of three types, endocytosis, exocytosis and transcytosis. So first in endocytosis, it is the process by which eukaryotic cells internalize material from their surrounding environment. It is further divided into two types, first phagocytosis and pinocytosis. This will be explained in detail further in this video. In exocytosis, as the name indicates, in this process, the substances are expelled from the cell without passing through the cell membrane. In transcytosis, it mediates transport by a combination of both endocytosis and exocytosis. All types of vesicular transport will be discussed in detail further in this video. The term endocytosis was coined by Christine D. Daw in 1963 in endocytosis. Internalization is achieved by the formation of membrane-bound vesicle at the cell surface that arise by progressive invagination of the plasma membrane, followed by pinching off and release of free vesicle into the cytoplasm. There are two types of endocytosis, first phagocytosis and second is pinocytosis. In phagocytosis, which is first re reported by Merchinko, it describes the internalization of large particles following particle binding to specific plasma membrane receptors and by formation of large endocytic vesicles that is in 250 nanometer in diameter called phagosomes. It is an active and highly regulated process involving signaling cascades mediated by rho family GTPs. Second, pinocytosis, also known as fluid phase endocytosis. It involves the ingestion of fluid and solutes by a small vesicle that is less than 150 nanometer in diameter. Receptor mediated endocytosis is an example of ligand specific pinocytic process. There are various differences between phagocytosis and pinocytosis. Some are listed below in the table. Phagocytosis is also known as cell eating, whereas pinocytosis is also known as cell drinking. Formation of pseudopodium occurs in phagocytosis, whereas pinocytosis occurs via invagination. Phagosomes and pinosomes are formed in phagocytosis and pinocytosis respectively. Phagocytosis involves transport of solid materials, whereas pinocytosis involves transport of solutes and small molecules. Phagocytosis occurs in specialized immune cells such as macrophages, monocytes and neutrophils, whereas pinocytosis occurs in all cells. Exocytosis occurs in phagocytosis but not occurs in pinocytosis. Example of phagocytosis is engulfment of bacteria and the examples of pinocytosis are enzymes and hormones. Next is receptor mediated endocytosis. It is also an important topic of CSIR net life sciences. It is an example of ligand specific pinocytic process. In it a specific receptor on the cell surface binds tightly to the extracellular macromolecules that is ligand that it recognizes the plasma membrane region containing the receptor ligand complex then undergoes endocytosis becoming a transport vesicle receptor mediated endocytosis may be of two types first clathrin dependent endocytosis and second is clathrin independent endocytosis in clathrin dependent endocytosis macromolecules bind to cell surface receptors accumulated in clathrin coated pits and enter the cell as receptor ligand complexes in clathrin coated vesicles clathrin consists of three copies each of heavy chain and light chain forming a three legged structure called as triskelion clathrin assembles into coats on the cytoplasmic side of the plasma membrane by interacting with its adapter protein that is ap1 ap2 ap3 and ap4 for example, a common example of clathrin mediated endocytosis is the uptake of cholesterol containing particle called low density lipoprotein LDL. It occurs by clathrin AP2 coated pits and vesicles. AP2 is heterotetramer, consists of two large 
one medium and one small subunit. It was demonstrated by Michael Brown and Joseph Goldstein. These clethrin coated vesicles from the plasma membrane move to endosomes. Dynamine, a cytoplasmic protein, is essential for release of complete vesicles. Dynamine polymerizes around the neck portion and then hydrolyzed GTP. The energy derived from GTP hydrolysis is essential for the final pinching of a completed clethrin coated vesicle. Second, in clethrin independent endocytosis, this can be mediated by cavioli and macropinosomes in cavioli mediated endocytosis. Cavioli are flash shaped invaginations on the cell surface in many cell types, especially in endothelial cells and adipocytes. These flasks are rich in proteins as well as lipids such as cholesterol and sphingolipids. Formation and maintenance of cavioli is due to protein caviolin. The presence of caviolin leads to the local change in morphology of the membrane. Second type is exocytosis. In exocytosis, cells transport substances from the interior of the cell to the exterior of the cell. In this transport, vesicles destined for the plasma membrane undergo fusion with the plasma membrane and release the contents outside of the cell. Exocytosis plays several functions as it allows cells to secrete waste substances and molecules such as hormones and proteins. It is also important for chemical signal messaging and cell-to-cell -cell communication. In addition, it is used to rebuild the cell membrane by fusing lipids and proteins removed through the endocytosis back into the membrane. Exocytotic vesicles are formed by Golgi apparatus, endosomes, and presynaptic neurons. Exocytosis occurs in many cells including pancreatic cells and neurons. In the pancreas, hormones insulin and glucagon are stored in secretory granules and released by exocytosis when signals are received. In addition to hormones, the pancreas also secretes digestive enzymes, proteases, lipases and amylases by exocytosis. Synaptic vesicle exocytosis occur in nephrons of the nervous system. Nerve cells communicate by chemical signals, that is neurotransmitters, which are transmitted by exocytosis. Types of exocytosis There are three common pathways of exocytosis. First is constitutive exocytosis. Second is regulated exocytosis. And third is lysosome mediated exocytosis. In constitutive exocytosis involves the regular secretion of molecules. This is performed by all cells. It functions to deliver membrane proteins and lipids through the cell membrane and to expel substances through the cell exterior. Whereas, regulated exocytosis depends on the presence of extracellular signals for the expulsion of materials within vesicles. Regulated exocytosis occurs in secretory cells. Third type of exocytosis in cells involve the fusion of vesicle with lysosomes. Lysosomes contain acid hydrolase enzymes which break down waste materials and carry their digested material to the cell membrane where they fuse with the membrane and release their contents into the extracellular matrix. Steps of exocytosis. It occurs in four steps in constitutive pathway and in five steps in regulated one. These steps include first vesicle trafficking, second tethering, third docking, fourth priming and fifth is fusion. In vesicular trafficking, in it vesicles are transported to the cell membrane along microtubule of the cytoskeleton. Second in tethering, upon reaching the cell membrane the vesicle becomes linked to and pulled into contact with the cell membrane. Third docking, it involves the attachment of the vesicle membrane with the cell membrane. Fourth in priming, it occurs in regulated exocytosis and not in constitutive exocytosis. It involves specific modification that happen in cell membrane molecules for exocytosis to occur. Fifth in fusion, in it the vesicle membrane fully or temporarily fuse with the cell membrane. Third type is transcytosis. It is a process of transcellular transport which combines both endocytosis and exocytosis. It is employed to import an extracellular ligand from one side of a cell 
transport it across the cytoplasm and secrete it from the plasma membrane at the opposite side. Common steps of transcytosis include endocytosis, intracellular vesicular trafficking, and exocytosis. For example, movement of maternal immunoglobulin, for example, antibodies, across the intestinal epithelial cells of the newborn human. The fate of receptor. The fate of a receptor ligand complex depends upon its response to the acidic environment of the endosome. Exposure to low pH changes the conformation of the external domain of the receptor causing the its ligand to be released and changes the structure of the ligand. There are three possible fate of a receptor ligand complex. First is receptor recycled and ligand degraded. An example of this is LDL receptor whose ligands are plasma low density lipoprotein. LDL binds with its receptor and the LDL is released from its receptor in the endosome. The receptor recycles to the surface to be used again and the LDL is sent on to the lysosome where it is degraded. Second is receptor and ligand both recycled. The transferrin receptor provides the classic example of this pathway. Most cells acquire iron from transferrin by a receptor mediated process and the transferrin receptor controls iron uptake. Binding of transferrin to its receptor is rapidly followed by internalization of the transferrin receptor complex to a clathrin coated vesicle which soon matures to an ATP driven proton pumping endosome. The iron fuse ligand called apotransferrin from acid environment of endosome remains bound to the receptor and recycled to the plasma membrane. Third is receptor and ligand both are degraded. The epidermal growth factor receptor binds its ligand and internalizes it. Although epidermal growth factor and its receptor appears to dissociate at low pH, they are both carried on to the lysosome where they are degraded. So this is all about vesicular transport and its types. If you like my video then subscribe my channel and hit the bell icon for more such videos. Thank you.